Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 2023 Yahoo Finance Invest Asia Conference. I'm Brian Sazi, Yahoo Finance's executive editor. This year, investors continue to face numerous challenges as the economic recovery process proves to be lengthy, with factors such as inflation, geopolitical tensions, and national disputes keeping the global economy on edge. However, in the two years since the pandemic end, market goers have continued to see new opportunities and emerging issues. This year, under the theme Beyond Border, Collaborating for Financial Excellence, we will dive into the future economic development of the Asian region. We brought together many top corporate leaders, influential decision makers, and renowned figures to help us dissect how to navigate these challenging times. We will explore how to capitalize on future industry trends like AI, 5G, and fintech amid the rapid evolution of technology. We will also explore how startups can create business opportunities and how to approach a diverse investment strategy in the context of real estate and hot topics like ESG. Now let's get started with the 2023 Yahoo Finance Invest Asia Conference. Welcome to Yahoo Finance Invest Asia. And joining us now is Inalux Chairman and CEO, Jim Hung. Uh, Mr. Hung, thank you for joining us. I know these are very busy times. We appreciate it. Hi, morning, Brian. Thanks for having me here. Take us through the state of your business, making, uh, I believe, what, LCD panels and displays, really touching consumers not only in your home market but around the world. What are some of the biggest trends you're seeing right now? Right. I think overall speaking that um, LCD TV or panel come out at the very beginning as a device for the um, digital display uh, images. However, um, it has been pretty much reached, uh, uh, I won't say the limit, but it's reached some kind of the uh, uh, bottleneck um, given the demand supplies uh, imbalance. Right now, that what we are seeing a lot of the challenges coming is the, uh, the price side. Um, however, um, we do see uh, more value from the uh, panel itself. Actually, not from what we have been seeing on the front. Like people now are looking for bigger size or higher uh, resolution. But we would say that uh, some of the conditions we cannot see with the bare eyes include a lower um, power consumption or effective um, signal transmission or uh, even the heat dispersion. Those are the things we are actually um, doing a lot of the investment into. And we believe that um, our new role as a panel maker behind the screen is like a pivot for the signal and the power transmission. In a nutshell, we are not just a panel maker. We are more as an expert in making the uh, micrometer labels transmission on the glass substrate. So a lot of the new applications like a LC window, LC antenna, or even our recent announced the investment on the panel level packaging, uh, we believe will put the uh, original panel makers in a very diversified uh, new position. I was telling you uh, off camera, I recently got an 80 plus, plus inch TV and it has changed my life, but I'm already looking for something bigger. I, I can't afford it, but I'm already now thinking what would a hundred inch TV look like in my house? My question to you is what is next? I, I can't imagine I'm alone in thinking on, you know, what is beyond the big screen TV? Does it fold? I, I imagine you have great insight into some of these things. Right, right. I think like you say that um, previously people's looking at the TV or the panel itself only just for display the, the beautiful image like a beautiful face presenting on the beautiful images. But um, if you look at the company itself, the companies like Interlux, because right now we are putting um, a lot of uh, integration into the uh, software. We're talking about the AIoT, for example, that a lot of the uh, sensors um, around the house, around the car, so the application on the panel itself is no longer just on TV. It's no longer just on the monitor or the panel itself. It's actually around the whole world. And that actually uh, put a lot of the new applications into the panel itself. So I do think that uh, it's become a, a human machines interface. So that gives a new value to the panel. How will AI or artificial intelligence change what you do? Oh, definitely. I think the AI itself is not just a, a device upgrade. It's actually um, give a lot of the value to the whole industry. For example, the cycle has been very volatile. Consumer electronics is being up and down significantly. And we do believe that with the AI's help on the market oriented side, uh, we can be better forecast um, for the demand and for the hub, for the inventory adjustment. 
And even if you're looking back into the, the factory itself, the whole manufacturing process, you know that the panel manufacturing process actually uh, requires dozens of the precise manufacturing from photogeography, liquid crystal spray, so on and so forth, right? So I think with the AI's help, actually that um, the whole process can be much more efficiently. And also we're talking about ESG. We think that with the AI's help, uh, a lot of the demand can be customized. A lot of the waste during the whole process can be mitigated. So I think that, yes, um, AI is definitely going to have a significant impact into the whole uh, value chain. Do you think we'll, we'll be interacting with our large screen TVs like we do a tablet? Yes and no. You mean that um, the, how the AI will impact into the TV correct. like we impact into the notebook, right? Yes, correct. I mean, do you see us going up to our TV because of this new powerful AI and, and we're touching the screen and we're unlocking all this information that maybe we didn't have before? Right, right. Um, yes and no. The reason I'm saying that is because, first of all, the, the notebook is probably more for the business use. A lot of the applications on the notebook is still for the office, for the education related. So AI on that perspective definitely um, help the, the whole process become more, much more efficiently when we're doing our, our work, so on and so forth. But TV itself so far was still more for the um, entertainment. However, from the other side, TV is kind of the center of the whole living room, right? So a lot of people do talk about the possibility that with the AI's help in the TV, in the, in the whole living room, it could become a hub for the, um, the whole dining room, living room's control, for the air conditioner, for the washing machine, so on and so forth. Even can connect automatically, automatically with the car and, and other applications. Just given your worldview, what's demand look like for your televisions and your notebook computers right now? Right. Okay, I will answer that probably um, in two fourths. First of all, on the global economy, I think um, obviously inflation and job market, uh, to some extent, the recent rising geopolitical concern, those are the things interrelated with each other and will definitely have um, uh, some of the concerns to people and that will probably uh, cap on some of the demands. Even inflation probably um, reached the peak or almost reached the peak. The impact to the job market is yet to see. So um, that is something uh, from the overall economy side. However, on the, particularly on the technology itself, I will say that um, definitely the, the whole digitalization or even to an extent is digital transformation through TV, through notebook will impact on people's daily life. I think the generative AI is a, is a catalyst and obviously you create opportunity and, and challenge on both sides. So I think flip on the right side, you will overcome the challenge. As you look into 2024, what's your biggest challenge as a leader and as a company? Just given everything we have, we're seeing in the world right now, these are just very risky times, not only for leaders, but for people on the ground, households, you name it. Right, right. Like I said earlier, from the very top down, the economic overall definitely impact on the people's pocket. So how much money people can really spend, that will cap on some of the demand side. However, from the other hand, I think the technology itself has been evolved um, very fast. I think that will be um, from the company perspective, because each of the business cycle has become shorter and shorter. And that also, uh, and also a lot of abundant liquidity make the whole cycle become uh, very difficult to predict. So the volatility has become bigger. And that's where, um, as a, a business owner, that's the, the difficulty thing to how to make the business more resilient, how to overcome each of a down cycle. And from my perspective, I would say that actually to break down the, the, the silo um, internally on the organization and also to have a coherent team is probably the, the best way to, to overcome the downturn.